So this is part two <clears throat> of the atmosphere lecture. Um, just to kind of recap a couple of things, the stratosphere, you should already have this, the stratosphere, the temperature increases with the height above Earth due to the ozone. And ozone's O3. Oxygen that we breathe is O2. The ozone <clears throat> layer is O3. Um, ozone, when it's not in the ozone layer and it drops down into the troposphere, it becomes pollution. Um, and it's something we actually do not want to breathe. Uh, it won't necessarily kill us, but it will make us not feel well. Um, the stratosphere is 14 to 50 kilometers above the Earth. Um, it is very calm layer, um, and this allows for undisturbed flights. So you'll take a look at the picture, supersonic jets, uh, not usually passenger jets, but um, military jets. Um, and the ozone layer, it's found near the bottom of the stratosphere. The ozone layer is pretty important, and we're going to talk about that next. So hopefully you have all this already. Um, the ozone, I really like this picture. Um, the ozone layer is, um, ozone gas absorbs the solar radiation. So since it absorbs the solar radiation, that's heat, and it releases that heat. Um, so it is an integral part of keeping our atmosphere and our planet just at the right temperature, so it's not too hot and not too cold. It protects us from harmful ultraviolet UV rays. Um, those UV rays are what causes you to suntan, um, and that suntanning actually does, over time, affect your skin. Um, worst case scenario, you can get skin cancer. So if you are outside, you do need to wear sun protection, and you need to make sure that you look and it says protects you against UVA and UVB rays because there are two types. So hopefully this was a little bit of a review. So we're going to move on. Um, this layer, if you take a look at the picture, it's a meteor. And I remember meteor begins with an M, and so does the mesosphere. So the mesosphere is from 50 to 80 kilometers. Um, I'm not going to ask you to memorize any of these numbers. I'm going to expect you to know what is the first layer that touches the Earth troposphere. What's above the troposphere? The stratosphere. What's above the stratosphere? The mesosphere. So I need you to know those orders. And I need you to know the tropopause is after the troposphere and before the stratosphere. I'm going to need you to know those two. So in this particular layer, the air temperature decreases. That means it gets colder the higher above the Earth you go. Air temperature decreases. That means it gets colder. This is the coldest layer at negative 100 degrees. That is super duper cold. Um, this protects the Earth from meteoroids. meteoroids. Um, they usually burn up in this layer. So the shooting stars you see are often meteors burning up in our atmosphere. We call them meteoroids. Um, so this is the mesosphere. Um, above the mesosphere is the thermosphere. And it says heat sphere because we all know thermo means heat. So make sure you understand heat sphere. This is 80 kilometers on out to space. Um, this guy gets hotter the higher you go in the atmosphere. So the temperature increases means it gets hotter. Um, so it's running 1,800 degrees to 3,300 degrees. And to put it in perspective, water boils at only 212 degrees. So that is super hot. Um, if you take a look at this picture here on the right hand side, those are what's called the aurora borealis. That's a mouthful and that's hard to spell. So feel free to call them the northern lights. We don't usually see them here in Ohio. They're usually seen in Canada and towards the North Pole. And this top picture, um, it's a space shuttle. And most of you are not familiar with the space shuttle because it's been retired for quite a while. Okay, so thermosphere. The ionosphere is actually the lower part of the thermosphere. And the exosphere is actually the upper part of the thermosphere. Um, in one of the classes yesterday, a student asked, well, Miss Drake, we have a tropopause, we have a stratopause, and we have a mesopause. Why don't we have a thermopause? And 
we don't have a thermal pause because once we get up to this height, uh, it is it is not dense whatsoever. Having particles, finding particles, uh, there's not that many of them up here because if you remember, space is um, a vacuum. There is no particles in space. There is no atmosphere. There is no matter in space. So we're getting closer and closer to space. So that means the particles of gases are getting further and further apart. So it gets pretty hard to separate the thermosphere and the exosphere. So to put in a thermal pause would make it even harder. Um, so this is the thermosphere. Uh, we're going to talk about the ionosphere. Um, it includes, it's included in the mesosphere and the thermosphere. So it's kind of a band that's in the mesosphere and a thermosphere. It's between 80 and 550 kilometers. Again, you don't really need to know this. Um, these gas particles absorb ultraviolet and x-ray radiation from the sun. Um, and what happens is when these molecules absorb that radiation, it excites them. It makes them move faster. Um, and then these particles become electrically charged. So most of them will gain electrons. Some will lose electrons. And that means these ions are not in their normal state that they like to be. And when they're not in the normal state, they become agitated and more active. So they move faster. And knowing this property helps us as human beings um, know that and understand that radio waves are bounced off these ions and reflect back to life or back to Earth. So this idea that radio waves, let's talk about this. So there is a connection between radio, the TV, the old TV, not cable, and your cell phones. They all have a basic theory behind them. And that's so you if you go to a radio station, they broadcast their music and their and their news out at a certain frequency. So let's say it's 103.3, that's their call sign. That means their frequency that they're putting out the energy is 103.3 and that energy is sound energy. So if we were to go step outside or even in this classroom, there's actual energy right now bombarding us. We don't feel it and we don't see it. If I want to capture that energy and I'm going to capture the radio energy, then I have to turn the dial on my radio, the mechanism that's going to collect this energy, to 103.3. And the antenna is going to uh, pull that energy in. And then the mechanism inside the radio is going to actually turn that radiation, um, those vibrations into sound that I can recognize. If I want to hear 98.6, then I turn the dial to 98.6. And then the mechanism reads the frequency that's at that level. So there's energy around us all the time. TV, the old fashioned TV, not cable, worked the same way. The TV station would broadcast out into the air at a certain frequency. And most homes had an antenna, some were really tall, some were not. Um, and your TV was plugged into that antenna in the wall, or you had a, a, an antenna from your TV. And your dial on your TV um, would tune into that fre specific frequency, and that TV mechanism would turn that energy into sound energy and light energy. Your cell phone does the same thing. So it's collecting all this energy that's out here in the atmosphere. And we're familiar with cell phone towers. We also have radio when we had one radio was big, we had radio towers, we had TV towers. And as technology advanced, um, instead of having just the towers, we have satellites so that when these ions are bouncing around and some of them get out and escape, you know, that can be put back into our atmosphere. Um, you know, if we want places um, other than Dayton, Ohio to hear a specific radio or cell phone um, information, we put these towers all around uh, the globe, and that helps us move those around. So us knowing and understanding as human beings, learning, knowledge is power. So when we learned about these ions and how they helped us 
um, move waves and energy that helped us get better TVs and get better phones. And that helped us get better um, cell phones. So knowing this helps us build a product to help to, to better our lives. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the exosphere, 550 kilometers on out into space. It's super duper thin because space is the absence of anything. It's a vacuum. So there is no air molecules out in space. So by the time we get to the exosphere, it's super duper thin. Um, satellites orbit the Earth here. It's a picture of a satellite. Um, it's really hard to figure out the definitive boundary between the exosphere and the thermosphere just because the air is so extremely thin. There's not a, it's not easy to figure out where that boundary is. Okay, on your notes page, there's one last section. We're not going to learn about the magnetic magnetosphere, so you can cross off that last section. Um, what we're doing next is we're moving on to the elaboration. Uh, there should be a link in this Google Classroom um, post for it, and it's also on a, the Friday link. That's what we're moving on next.